Hello aspiring IELTS candidate. In today's video, I'm going to dispel a common misconception about the fluency, which is a important criteria of IELTS speaking module. There is a prevalent misconception that fluency means solely speed. In fact, some candidate believe that speaking faster will result into a higher band score. Fluency goes beyond mere speed. It involves smooth and a natural flow of the speech allowing the speaker to communicate effectively without hesitation or unnecessary pauses. Moreover, ideas should be presented coherently by using wide range of vocabulary and grammatical accuracy. Achieving a high band score is more likely when an examiner observes a candidate effortlessly sustaining a conversation. But before actually starting the video, I would like to request you all to please subscribe this channel, like and share and do let me know in the comment section what topics you want me to make a video on. So let's get started. Allow me to elaborate on fluency. It's not merely tied to speaking quickly. If your emphasis is solely on speed, your ideas may lack depth, impacting both your grammatical variety and overall expression. Concentrating solely on pace might limit your use of diverse tenses, leading to a more basic linguistic range, which may be like simple or continuous tense. Moreover, maintaining a monotonous tone can hinder your ability to achieve a higher band score in the IELTS exam. To excel, it's crucial to strike a balance, ensuring not only a steady pace, but also varied tenses, enriched vocabulary and a dynamic tone in your speech. In the context of the IELTS exam, fluency refers to the ability to express oneself in a smooth, coherent and a natural manner without too much hesitation. It also encompasses the ability to maintain a steady flow of speech, which means how well candidates can speak at a natural pace without unnecessary pauses or disruption while conveying their thoughts. The examiner also notices a balanced amalgamation of vocabulary richness grammatical accuracy, clear pronunciation, and appropriate annotations to convey a message comprehensively. And trust me, you can't focus on correct intonations if you speak hastily. Proper intonation helps convey emotions and meaning effectively. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to give you five simple methods by which you can drastically improve your fluency. And number one is think in English. Thinking in English lays the groundwork for fluency by streamlining the mental process of English language. This practice fosters a direct link between thoughts and expressions, promoting quicker, more seamless communication by bypassing translations from one native language to English. So you don't need to think of the answer in your native language first and then translate into English. It means that the moment you hear the question, think of the answer in English. There is no need to think of the answer in your native language and then translate it because it is time taking, time consuming. So you are consciously pre-planning sentences or visualizing scenarios in English that trains your brain to default to think in English. Gradually, with consistent practice and exposure, you will find yourself naturally and effortlessly thinking in English in various situations. But to develop the habit of thinking in English, you have to immerse yourself in the English language through daily activities. It is interrelated to practice speaking English actually. Surround yourself with English media such as books, magazines, plays or podcasts and engage in conversation in English whenever possible. So actively describe your thoughts and experiences or observations in your mind using English words and phrases. Okay, the second method is prepare a wide range of topic. So what happens that sometimes the problem is not linguistic, but simply you are unaware of the topic. Common topics that some candidates find weird are arts, music, time travel, extra. These are not weird, but because some of us are not interested in these subjects, we find them difficult to discuss. So prepare for all possible subjects. 
it will help you with cognitive flexibility exploring various topic exercise your ability to think critically and creatively it broadens your perspective allow you to approach idea from different angles this mental agility enhance your ability to articulate thoughts more fluently and persuasively also prepare diverse topics help in structuring your response effectively you become accustomed to organizing your thoughts logically improve coherence and making it easier to convey ideas in a clear and structured manner during the speaking sessions the speaking topic and sample questions are readily available on the internet pick from there and have at least first hand knowledge of every topic okay now third method is build up meaningful vocabulary in the previous video i have already talked what i meant by meaningful vocabulary so you can watch that video meaningful vocabulary is to build your own vocabulary the words that are required by you and not utilizing elementary level vocabulary i mean how long are you going to use the same words that we have once used in primary section hot cold good bad happy sad these all may result in a lower band score to elevate your score incorporate more advanced vocabulary by embracing an extensive range of words you can also avoid repetition by this in addition a broader vocabulary minimize pauses or hesitation while speaking when you are familiar with a variety of words you are less likely to struggle to find the right word allowing for a more fluent and uninterrupted flow of speech okay next is that is i strongly advise you to consider using phrasal verbs or phrasal words this is a characteristic in your speaking that differentiates with your writing style moreover it sounds informal which is another requirement for the speaking module thirdly native speakers often employ phrasal words in their everyday situation contributing to the colloquial nature of a spoken language so it is advisable to familiarize yourself with these expression to better understand informal english and communicate more effectively in casual setting just like a speaking module of the ielts exam okay this i have placed at the fifth position because this is going to be a lengthy um, in comparison to the first four months but i can't emphasize more on practice it may sound simple but it has other 3 4 5 five things that you have to do in order to practice more and more and number one is engaging in conversation if you are extremely shy and that is a case with many of us that we are simply shy we are afraid that other people might laugh at us or they make fun of us so what you can do if you are at the beginning of your preparation talk to your mother or little brothers and sister yeah it really helps you it gives you confidence gradually elevate your bar but don't lose hope don't quit if so many people can do it you can do another is drench yourself in english language watch english dramas and sitcoms i don't recommend watching movies because it has so many other things like action visual effects seven cinematography extra that keep your attention away from language but listening to podcast is also very helpful it helps you in understanding how naturally english speakers speak where they take pauses what word they stress and what they pass quickly and how this stress and pauses help in better narration okay another one is reading aloud it has a number of benefits in this way you can also practice pronunciation which is critical to keep in mind because the examiner scrutinizes pronunciation and it does not matter if you pronounce the word in an american or english way as long as you are pronouncing it correctly while doing this activity focus on rhythm and intonations as well stress on certain words and take natural pause to sound like a natural speaker 
If you don't practice this, the examiner might think of it as a linguistic issue. Choose various topics that are common in speaking the exam and then record yourself. And listen back to identify areas for improvement. Like if you are speaking in a monotonous tone or if you are using same tenses again and again. It also gives you an idea of how loud you have to speak to be heard clearly. There are no external distractions during exam, but it's good to practice in an audible pitch. It also shows your confidence that you are not intimidated by the examiner. Another method that comes under practice is using a mirror. It has the same benefit as recording yourself. In fact, it outweighs the previous one. If you record a clip of 5 minutes, you need an extra 5 minutes to listen to it again. So, this method saves time. Another advantage is that you look into your eyes in the mirror, which gives you confidence to look into the examiner's eye. Okay, there is one more that comes in my mind and it's not mentioned in this slide, that you can find a language partner, especially an English teacher. It would be great. You will receive positive feedback. His or her expertise allow for personalized guidance tailored to your specific needs and the skill level. Okay. So, practice, practice and practice. Remember, achieving fluency takes practice and dedication. I have seen many candidates significantly improve their speaking score by focusing on these aspects. That's all for today. I hope these insights help you understand the true essence of fluency in the IELTS speaking module. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tips on taking your IELTS exam. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your preparations.